Hey there, it's Aaron. In this video, I'm going to do some restoration work on the image that is here on our screen. I think that it's a nice image, the composition is nice, all kinds of detail, and the shadowing is very natural. So I think that we should have a great outcome. And it is not a high resolution image by any means. It's 512 by 512. So we don't have to zoom in very far before we start to see some very heavy pixelation. So what I have done is brought it over here to dgb.lol and I'm in the process of upscaling it for us. So in a couple of minutes it will be ready and I'll come back and we can get started. So with our image finished upscaling, I'll download it here and we can open it up in Photoshop and have a look at it. So let's zoom in here and we will zoom in on our original. So here's before and here is after, before and after, quite a striking difference. I do have a complaint, which is how it's affected the eye up here and the white of the eye com in comparison to the other. If you look at the original, there is a reason why it's because it's picked this up here and really it's just an overemphasis. I'm not going to get in here and try to clean that up because with an audience, I'm just bound to mess it up. So what I would like to do is focus on the easy wins here. Uh, the things that I want to do are brighten up the image, bring out some clarity, and um, really just kind of even out the background before we hit the colorizing process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up the remove tool just so that I can get rid of these corner elements here so that it's just going to help things out with our next phases. I'm going to unclick remove after each stroke so that I can come in here and do one, two, three, and just this little piece over there, four. And I can let those all process here at the same time. And that does look better already. So I'm just going to check that again before I forget for my next mission. And I would like to even things out. There are some flaws and I just kind of like to even things out in the background, make sure that everything is um, nice and cohesive. So I'm going to bring up the lasso tool and I'm going to get in here, whoops, I'm going to get in here and do something like this. Don't have to be very exact. Bring it across here, across the bottom, and up the side. Did I get things successfully? Yeah, I think that works, especially since I was working a little bit blind there. I'll invert the selection because I want to just generate fill without any instruction so that it's just going to flatten everything out. And get rid of, there's some little flaws here, a couple little spots over here. And I feel like it's just going to help bring everything together, I think. So let's see, version one, version two, version three. I don't know, I'm sort of tempted to take version three just because it has a bit of a natural feeling, but I'm going to go with number one. This is very flat looking. I think that this is going to work out great. So awesome, just quickly flattened that. And now I'm going to show you where I like to start with my image adjustments. And that is up here in image adjustments, shadows and highlights. Now watch this. As soon as I jump in here, you're going to see an increase in the clarity and the brightness just based on the settings that I had in here previously. So you can adjust the amount of shadow. And by decreasing the amount of shadow though, it doesn't blow out the whites and oversaturate them really the way that it did here in this eye. You can see how you can really in increase the brightness and the clarity without it blowing out the details. So of course you do want to find a nice balance here of natural highlight. We don't want it to look like she's got a heavy studio light on her. Highlights, when we colorize, we want it to have some natural gradients and shadows happening. We don't want it too dark or else she's going to look like she, this skin color itself is oversaturated. Here on adjustments in color, 
on a black and white image like this, it really is going to go more between black and white at this end and more sepia at this end. I'm just going to leave it at its default here of 20. And I'm in the habit of changing these black clips and white clips to 1%. Sometimes it will help things pop a little bit. So let's look at before and after. Before, after. So, so much more clarity without losing definition. Look at the clothing, the hair, the braid, and especially the brightness of the face. Awesome. So I would say that that was quite successful. It also seems to take care of in one step what I would normally have done with um, a curves layer, possibly a color balance layer, and exposure. It just sort of takes care of all those things in one fell swoop. So I'm really happy with this. Now the next thing to do is going to be to bring some color into her world. So I'm going to try two different methods. The first one is going to be with the Adobe Neural Filters and the colorizing that is built into Adobe itself. So we'll try this. I find that it does have sort of hit and miss success. Let's check out and see what it does in this case. It works so quickly though. I love it. So it does a great job on skin tones. They look natural enough, somewhat of a painting look. Um, but as far as what I call over tinting, it's done that on the hair and definitely in the clothing. And that is something that it's trying to emulate something from really old style photography where they would just sort of tint things to try to give some element of dimensionality to the image. In this case, we're going to accept that as a new layer so that it is here, but not destructive to our original black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and save the black and white version as, do a quick export here. And I had been down this path before. I'm just going to save over that image. Excellent. So now we know what kind of result we're going to have with Adobe colorizing. Let's take it over here to a website called Palette FM. And here at Palette FM, we can upload the image. Here is our new image. And it does colorizing similar to like Instagram with different filters. So we're going to try the base palette, palette, vivid natural, warm glow. And then there are a couple at the end that I seem to have great success with as well. Ambient historic and vintage charm. So I saw that some of them had come back. Let's have a look at the base palette. That actually is very, very nicely done. Um, that could be a winner right away. Look at the skin tones are very natural. The way that it has tinted the clothing in this case uh, is quite nice. It seems like it's brought that tinting up into the hair color, which I don't necessarily care for. Let's look at our other options. Vivid Natural, definitely more in the browns than those iridescent. That sort of puts a, a sort of lavender haze over things that I don't care for. Ambient Historic, nice. And Vintage Charm is also nice. Hmm. Kind of ambient looking. Okay, comparing the skin tone, this looks a little bit um, yellow compared to here on Vintage. So let's compare Vintage with our base. I'm kind of leaning more towards the base. I'm not going to lie. The skin tones just seem more natural. Let's just compare one more time here. Vintage Charm. I just wish that there was a little bit more saturation. I'm going to take the Vivid Natural. Let's take it. Now let's take base. I'm going to take the base and download it in the end. I've made my decision. Final answer. So let's open up our newly colorized image. Looking good until we zoom in here a little bit and find out that it's actually a lower resolution than what we had started with. This is images 500 by 500 and we had started at a tiny 512 by 512. So we've gone down in resolution. What I want to do is take the color from here and use it over on our high res model. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to select the entire area here and copy it and paste it in a new layer here on our high res version. And I'm going to go transform, bring that up to this corner and down to this corner. And I'm going to change my overlay mode from normal to color. And I think you see what it's done. I'll accept that. And if I zoom in here and turn off that layer, you'll see that it is just changing the color and it hasn't brought over the resolution as an artifact. So let's now look at, here is black and white, here's the Adobe Colorize, and here's the Palette FM Colorize. So again, that was black and white, Adobe Colorize, and Palette FM Colorize. I think that the Palette FM did a fantastic job. There's just one little touch I want to do here, which is just crop things in a little bit so that she's well centered within the frame. Just cut a little bit of that shoulder off. Wow, I think that we've done some justice to our figure here. I think that she's looking great. I'd really like to know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to encourage me to make more of them. And with that, I will see you the next time.